Hello everyone. My name is James McCoish from Pinnacle Results. Thank you for joining us for our presentation on Introduction to Project Definition Rating Index, PDRI. Today we'll cover an introductory overview. We share this with our client teams prior to working with them on their PDRI analysis workshops. For more information on PDRI and on other project management optimization methods, please contact us at pinnacleresults.com. First, we'll revisit the StageGate front-end loading project process and see how the PDRI assessment fits with and improves that front-end loading process. Front-end loading is arguably the single most important process in the capital project life cycle, known by many terms such as project planning, front-end planning, sanctioning process and others. FEL creates the critical underpinning to any capital project. It is focused on creating a strong early link between the business or mission need project strategy, scope, cost and schedule and maintaining that link unbroken throughout the project life. Front-end loading has been considered an industry best practice for many years. The methodology typically uses a stage and gate process whereby a project must pass through formal gates at well-defined milestones within the project's life cycle before receiving funding to proceed to the next stage of the work. Funding decisions at these gates are based upon appropriate decision support packages being submitted. FEL is often used by industries with high capital intensive projects. However, the methodology also applies well to smaller projects. Front-end loading includes robust planning and design early in projects life cycle, targeted at a time when the ability to influence changes in design is relatively high and the cost to make those changes is relatively low. The quality of FEL and importantly understanding project readiness to progress is substantially improved through the use of PDRI as part of the stage gate process. Although adding a minor amount of time and cost to the early portion of a project, these FEL costs are minor compared to the significant costs and effort required to make changes at later stages in the project. Additionally, effective FEL significantly reduces capital expenditure and improves project return on investment. Therefore, it is extremely important that both the time and the investment in scheduled workshops for FEL is included in the overall project budget and schedule and in planned allocation of resources. An example a decision support package. The project overview aligns key objectives and defines project and stage goals, confirms the gatekeeper expectations, aligns project to business goals and strategy and objectives, and guides the project planning so decisions and actions are consistent. The business case assessment presents the project economic indicators and risk-weighted economics assesses uncertainties around budget, cash flow, market and commercial viability, assesses the project in terms of the overall company portfolio of projects. Decision and risk analysis assesses the probability of risks occurring and analyzes their potential impact, eliminates biases which underestimate risk and its probability of occurrence and impact, recommends informed decisions based on the degree of risk, its probability and impact. 
planning for the project balances the competing demands of scope, time, cost, quality and other variables, helps measure project performance, identify issues and determine corrective action, integrates schedule cost and resources. This slide depicts the FEL methodology used and taught by Pinnacle Results. Front-end loading methodologies are applied during the middle stages of the overall phased approach to progressing major projects. The methods are generally initiated during the assess investment phase, refined during choice phase and finalized during design phase. The project leader is responsible for front-end loading definition and for ensuring the pre-funding assessment or decision support file is adequately prepared to justify continued investment in the project. It's important to remember decisions at the gates are funding decisions rather than checking boxes on team behaviours. The products of FEL methods and engagements are ensuring we have the right project and conducting right thinking, right decisions and right actions. Good design basis which minimizes the chance of costly changes during execute, provides decision makers or gatekeepers with a holistic understanding of risk and uncertainty. This requires a set of robust tool sets that are linked and well proven. The approaches shown here have been developed and applied over two decades on major projects and portfolios worldwide. Now it would be good if we could check a snapshot of how the project scope definition is progressing as we work through the FEL process and compare our project with other successful projects so that appropriate corrective action can be targeted and taken and the project readiness tracked over time. The ERI tool has been developed over years to provide insights on project scope definition and readiness to continue with detailed design and engineering. PDRI aligns well with industry standard phased stage gate project capital investment processes. This introduction to PDRI will provide background and helps prepare participants for effective input to our PDRI team sessions and an overview to all participants on the PDRI workshop methodology. So what is PDRI? It is an acronym. It stands for Project Definition Rating Index. Often the term rating is replaced in conversation by the term readiness since the tool provides insight as to the readiness of the project to proceed. It is an index. It calculates a score on the level of project scope definition on a continuum that will change as the team progresses through each of the stages of front-end loading planning. The results calculated index is ranked against the indices of other projects in the CII, Construction Industry Institute, database. PDRI is noted as one of the most comprehensive management tools available to assess potential risk associated with project scope development and design readiness. It is used around the world in both new construction and brownfield capital projects using the appropriate versions of PDRI that are available. There are now four versions of PDRI available. 
For industrial projects, this includes a broad range of capital projects that typically have extensive piping and mechanical equipment considerations. It includes power plants, chemical plants, refineries, water and waste treatments, manufacturing, just to name a few. It's an easy to use score sheet is based on the tools checklist of 70 scope definition elements. One of the best tools for measuring the completeness of project scope definition on industrial projects. Recently introduced, the PDRI small projects identifies and describes each critical element in a scope definition package for a small industrial project. Enables project teams to identify project risk factors related to desired outcomes for cost schedule and operating performance. Also captures mitigation actions and evaluates the completeness of scope definition at any point prior to detailed design and construction. The Buildings Project PDRI template is tailored specifically to commercial and building projects such as offices, medical facilities, institutional buildings and government facilities. One of the best tools for measuring the completeness of project scope definition on commercial and general building projects. It considers revamp and renovation as well as project security issues and contains 64 scope definition elements. And finally, the infrastructure projects template includes transportation pipelines, transmission and distribution. These projects typically cover a large geographical area with many stakeholder groups to manage. Right of way and environmental considerations are paramount. Again, one of the best tools for measuring the completeness of project scope definition on infrastructure projects of all sizes and types. This template is generally not used for in-plant infrastructure like piping, electrical or steam systems. Rather, the industrial or small projects template may be appropriate. The PDRI methodology was developed by the Construction Industry Institute. CII is a research consortium of over 140 members, including owners, engineering and construction contractors, suppliers and academic institutions. Members provided data and results and tested PDRI on a series of actual projects to confirm it effectively correlates the level of scope definition effort with the predictability of achieving project objectives. Over the past 20 years, CII research teams have worked collaboratively to develop FEL and construction industry best practices, including the PDRI methodology, with member-driven research and testing. To date, over 96 billion in total projects capital have been benchmarked by CII, with significant benefits noted for project teams that use PDRI. The benefits of PDRI. First, it's a proven method to quantify the level of scope development during front-end planning and how the project stacks up against other projects as one of the graphical outputs shown in the analysis results. Uh, secondly, it's an excellent way to promote alignment between everyone on your project team regardless of whether you represent the owner or design contractor. When we work together through a PDRI session, we have an opportunity to highlight any poorly defined areas where gaps exist in scope definition and readiness in an objective manner. And finally, the project teamwork in the PDRI session contributes to identifying risk associated with scope readiness and feeds into the project delivery risk assessment process. PDRI sessions are held at multiple points in the FEL process. The first PDRI analysis is typically held at the end of the assess feasibility prior to the stage gate review 
and part of the DSP to fund the choice stage. The second PDRI is held at the end of the choice or concept stage. In large projects, a PDRI intermediate session is often conducted partway through the detailed scope early in design. And finally, a PDRI 3 session is conducted at the end of detailed scope and prior to design review to proceed into full detailed design and execution. <clears throat> Often organizations or projects do not use all PDRI application points. In practice, they can implement PDRI as a DSP deliverable and generally conduct a minimum of two sessions for each of their projects. Providing effective scope definition review and supporting project decisions on the basis of design and detailed design execution planning. In PDRI, each of three major sections is broken down further into categories and elements. The industrial content that we see here includes 70 elements partitioned in the major categories shown in the pie chart. Notice the basis of project decision section represents almost half of the total evaluation for each industrial project. The PDRI process we follow is based on best practices for PDRI facilitation. We conduct an initial conversation to establish team expectations and the level of discussion appropriate. Generally, this is a good time to share an example report from the PDRI analysis so the project management can fully support the commitment of time and resources. We assign experienced facilitation staff with the best fit based on the project scope. Some organizations train several internal project managers in facilitation of PDRI workshops so they can work with other project teams. Generally, it's best to have an experienced facilitator from outside the project team to guide them through the process. We'll start with the kickoff meeting with our client sponsor where we outline the background documents our facilitator will need to prepare for the PDRI session. Generally, the facilitator will need to spend some time on a project overview to be adequately prepared to guide the team through the PDRI workshop effectively. In advance of the PDRI session, we hold a pre-workshop meeting, which generally includes the project manager and sponsor to review questions related to the project scope, discuss any known risk areas, and to review the venue logistics and attendees that are needed to have a successful session. The session itself generally requires at least half a day, often through a working lunch, with participation from all of the main stakeholders. Although if a significant number of participants are in the workshop or the project is particularly complex, a full long day may be required. Defining actions and responsibilities are recognized in the session as part of the PDRI workshop and are captured in the latter part of the workshop. It is important to schedule deadlines associated with the actions. At the conclusion of the session, we share the initial PDRI report with the project team using the PDRI format. In the debrief meeting after the session with the project manager, we review in detail how the project scored compared to relevant benchmarks and provide a final report for action. We also discuss the learnings and recommendations and the specific action items identified in the session from the PDRI software capture and separate notes. PDRI is not a silver bullet. It's not a 100% precision tool, but rather a set of insights the team can act upon to improve the project readiness to progress. Not a guarantee of success and does not permit the project team to promise complete success based on the scoring. 
or a replacement for sound project management practices in all other areas of front-end loading and other project management delivery imperatives. It cannot be used to assess the relative merits of technology selections and their potential impact on return on investment, and it's not a replacement for technology risk modeling techniques. Similarly, it does not quantify cost or risk uh, to schedule with probability calculations. It's not a project overall return on investment analysis tool to develop or replace cumulative probability curves for such metrics as net present value or rate of return. PDRI is a snapshot in time of the team consensus of the various categories and elements of project design scope readiness from aspects of project categories of basis of decision, basis of design and execution approach. This overall PDRI score characterizes the state of the project today and enables benchmarking against the CII database of many other projects. Here we see the scoring guidance instructions teams use to develop definition levels for each of the elements within the categories. The insights developed clearly depends on the objectivity and direct honesty of the PDRI participants. It is part of the work of the experienced facilitator to both guide and challenge the team through the analysis and interpret the scoring levels described in the detailed analysis. The ranges for scoring elements are from complete project design definition in place to poor definition. This is an agreed upon reflection of the work yet to be done and not a criticism of the team's performance. Analysis and resulting score provides insights as to how the current snapshot of PDRI scope definition compares with scope definition of the CII benchmarked data at the point of the analysis. The example output graphic shown shows how the project aligns with other projects at similar points in the project development. However, the real details are in the interpretation of actions required in the elements analysis. We look for items that have a score of four or five. We analyze to evaluate potential scope risk and define actions to be taken and assign responsibilities and similarly provide more definition to potential project scope contingency and define actions to be taken and responsibilities. Of the top 10 items whose total weight uh, is around uh, 384 points, after the PDRI workshop, the project team should commit to investing the time to get them right and to schedule follow-up review of the progress and ensure the team management alignment on these 10 elements is in place moving forward. Here is an example summary of score interpretation, which will be discussed after the PDRI workshop. And these are based on the latest CII database analysis. Example of low definition items from the PDRI software and the summary actions uh, that are noted. Here we can see in this example there are a few elements which can use some attention according to the project team consensus. Deadlines are set and responsibilities are assigned. This is a summary of PDRI template versions. These are the broad categories of the three major choices for PDRI templates. Comparison of these provides insights as to which PDRI version may be appropriate to the specific project to be analyzed. 
We should note there is now a PDRI for small industrial project available from CII and a ranking template is available to assist in selection of the small project version. Here is an example of the attendees who may attend the PDRI workshop. CII recommends these participants, however, these vary by project and are defined by the client and the project team to ensure the appropriate participation. Generally, the facilitator will assist in the planning for the appropriate participants. The methodology for actually conducting the workshop, uh, we recommend an experienced facilitator, uh, not a team member. However, does not necessarily have to be from outside the company if an internal experience facilitator is available. Quite a few companies have project managers from other projects who have had appropriate training and practice and act as PDRI facilitators. Often these companies engage outside facilitators initially to conduct workshops and training. It is definitely inadvisable for a team to attempt PDRI without an experienced facilitator. The key functions represented on the team, owner, operations, maintenance, process, suppliers, essentially to ensure all those impacted who require input to project scope prior to the detailed design have the opportunity to participate or whose views can be represented at the workshop. We ensure to reach a collaborative consensus on each element and that agreement in the room is in place prior to moving on. This is important so that participants do not look back on the workshop and potentially feel they disagreed with the input assessments of the elements. The PDRI discussion used as an engagement and alignment tool, often the consensus on answering the, the level of existing scope definition takes some discussion and agreement and is sometimes hard to reach. And that is a healthy and timely discussion. Analyzing and developing a path forward together with actionable items after the PDRI workshop, it is of course important to ensure the actions are addressed and follow-up is scheduled. Here are some common problems with application and implementing the PDRI. It may not be conducted uh, properly. Project manager and the project team are unable to remain objective. Sometimes it's difficult for teams to step back and honestly assess the actual current state of the project. Since they may plan to do more work in the ensuing months and years as part of their regular project development, and they may attempt to score the element based on the work yet to be done. We need to ensure we capture the status as of the day, regardless of the planned future actions. The snapshot today is what it is, and that is how the project should be scored. Playing the numbers game just to get a score, characterized by statements like, these are all ones, let's move on. If that was really the case, we would be ready for detailed design tomorrow with no further design scope discussion. This is often the case when some of the participants really do not wish to conduct the PDRI assessment. It's up to the project management, not the facilitator, to set the requirement of team participation and support the investment in the time and resources committed to the PDRI analysis. Perhaps the right people are not there the key functions not represented, all those who need to have input to the detailed design and the lifetime performance of the delivered project should either be there or surrogates who can represent their views should be there. If the team is forced to use a tool, perhaps with statements like, we're really busy now, but management wants us to check this box. This is normally uncovered in the PDRI pre-meeting discussion and needs to be resolved prior to the session. The questions are sent out 
to the to poll the members. This is often a tempting option for project managers who are unfamiliar with PDRI. It really does not work compared to the face-to-face -face development of consensus. However, teams often think this way to cut down on time. We absolutely recommend against this option. Sending out PDRI questions to be answered individually simply doesn't work. Conducting PDRI or the PDRI score being used as a basis for reward tends to result in poor, incomplete or erroneous input driven by the perceived reward rather than honest agreement on the current status of the project. So, in conclusion, PDRI improves planning effort, surfaces opportunities for improvement based on a snapshot of today's project assessment, provides a measure of uh, de facto team building. The work of consensus building is useful from a team building aspect, but it's not the primary focus of the analysis. This does contribute to saving money, time, and often alleviates frustration in the future by contributing to reducing rework and the associated potential cost and schedule impact of misaligned project progression and design changes. It is a proven methodology with reliable benchmarking, CII is well respected and the PDRI analysis tool is based on reliable data from members and has been tested and proven over many years. It indicates potential project scope risks, addresses potential for risks associated with incomplete project definition, which can seriously impact cost and schedule of project delivery and project ultimate performance. We identify opportunities for improvement, which will have actions defined and assignments made with deadlines and follow-ups scheduled. It benefits both the owners and contractors. All the above contribute to an improved understanding of the way forward needs with respect to project scope definition and can be an invaluable conversation and analysis for engineering contractors working with clients. It provides a structured industry standard. The tool's been accepted as proven industry standard and has been improved by CII and the members over time. We hope this introduction to PDRI has helped provide background and high-level guidance on how to effectively apply PDRI methodologies in your organization. Thank you so much for your attention. For any information on the subject matter we covered and on other project management optimization tools, visit Pinnacle Results website or contact us, uh, no fees for initial advice, we are happy to share and thank you again.